Welcome to another Last Hour Bereans, Last Days Update, where we discuss Bible prophecy, expose the wolves and false teachings that have crept into the church, declaring the soon return of the Lord, first for His church in the air, and then with His church at the end of the tribulation. Look up for our redemption. Welcome, everyone, to another LHV Last Days Update with Chris and Lewis. And again, we have a full house. Kim from Life Clips is here. Sam from Blessed Assurance. And Addie Miller from Discerning the Drift is all, they're all with us today. And we're going to be talking about the seven mountain mandate. Is it biblical? But before we begin, let's say hello to the LHB family. Kim, you go first. Hello, LHB. I'm glad to be back. Um, and I want to preface this, we're going to get a full line of storms coming in. So, um, as Sam said before, if something happens, the rapture has not taken place. <laughs> Sam? Hi, LHB family. I hope you're all having a good day. Awesome. Addie? Hello, everyone. It's good to be back uh, in wonderful company. So, looking forward to the topic. Awesome. And Brother Lewis? I'd like to welcome everyone back and uh, the new viewers. We're going to uh, uh, be joining us for for this uh, Seven Mountain uh, Mandate, um, which is uh, full of lies from the top to the bottom. Um, and if you have comments, we, we, we love your comments. We thank you for them. Amen, amen. And, and, and before we start, we had a another guest on uh, from our LHP family. Uh, she's an admin in the uh, in our in our Facebook group, Les Deanne, but she had technical difficulties, so she couldn't join us on this program. But we're gonna get her on. Don't worry. Maybe for the next one, but we're gonna get her on. We're gonna sort all that out. Okay. All right. So the Seven Mountain Mandate. Uh, Addy, quick rundown. What is that exactly? Like for people that have never heard that before, what is that? Okay, well, the Seven Mountain Mandate, just in a quick nutshell, is um, this special group of called apostolic secession apostles and prophets that claim that their office has been reestablished and they have been empowered by God to take over the seven mountains <clears throat> of the planet so that they can basically fix the problem. Of course, we know that's impossible, but let me quickly give you those seven mountains that they say they must infiltrate, they must take over, they must conquer so that they can build the kingdom of God on earth. So here they are. The, um, the seven mountain mandate title was originally coined by <coughs> Lance Wallnow, and of course, we won't be surprised at that. Hi, I'm Lance Wallnow. I want to talk to you for a moment about this concept called the 7M Mandate. In reality, it started with a conversation I had in the year 2000. I had been talking to Lauren Cunningham, who's the founder of Youth with a Mission, and Lauren was sharing with me about a conversation he had had with Bill Bright. The two of them were visited, actually, by the Lord within the same 24 hours. The two of them were visited, actually, by the Lord within the same 24 hours. And God spoke to them and said they had a message to give the other man. And the message was that there are seven molders of culture, or seven world kingdoms, and that he who could take those kingdoms could take the harvest of nations. Now, this illustration is the way I see it. I look at it this way. I see those seven molders of culture as being the religion mountain, as a metaphor for something you've got to take or climb, uh, then we have education, we could say, family. These are in no particular order of importance. They all represent the forces that shape societies and nations. Government, media, art, which is the entertainment mountain, and uh, business, which is where we have the economics mountain happening also. Now, these seven fields of influence are very powerful, so powerful, in fact, that he who occupies the top of those mountains can literally shape the agenda that, that forms nations. Now, why would nations be critical to our conversation? I think the distinguishing characteristic of this hour for the church is that we have spent so much time focusing on the church mountain, which would be this mountain over here, that we have 
maybe forsaken our responsibility to the rest of the world we're called to influence? Uh, number one is education, and this is in no particular order, so you may find them in, uh, in different orders. Education, number two, religion, three, family, four, business, five, government slash military, six, arts and entertainment, and seven, media. So according to the Seven Mountain Mandate, uh, apostles and prophets, they have to uh, conquer or infiltrate all of these societal areas so that they can claim the earth for God and build the kingdom of God so that Jesus can return. Wow, Kim, that's, that's okay. Basically. A lot more than Kim, that, but. <laughs> Kim, now what Addy just said, it, it sounds like that, uh, you know, we Christians must set up this kingdom by, that by taking over all, the, all of these mountains of influence. And we have to do this before Jesus could return because if we don't do it, he can't return. What do you, what do you say about that? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> but um, one thing, Addy, too, and I know people think this actually comes from Lance, but it was actually, believe it or not, the history of Seven Mountain Mandate goes way back. Um, it's actually oh, yeah. called the Seven Mountains of Influence. You're, so, you're But there right. are many names um, in that, and I'm not going to go through that just in case you bring that up, Chris. But one thing about the Seven Mountain Mandate, too, on media, they also include sports, So, which I find kind of funny. Yeah. But this is where the confusion lies, and this is I want to say this to make it clear so everyone understands. You've got Dominion Theology, and then you have mm -hmm. Kingdom Now Theology, which are merged into the Seven Mountain Mandate. But then you also have Kingdom Theology. So, Chris, to answer your question— Kingdom now theology is what is woven into the seven mountain mandate because it is, as Addy said, it's bringing, they want the kingdom on earth. So they have to do certain acts. Kingdom theology, however, is them talking about kingdom issues in the Bible. So that's the difference on that. Um, but yeah, no, I, you know what I think of, and I don't know, again, if you're going to bring this up, so hopefully I'm not on repeat, but you know what I think of when I think of the seven mountain mandate, the antichrist. And his uh, system yes. that he's going to set up. So going to bring that up. Going to ab absolutely yeah, bring that correct. up because they use a script yep. in Revelation actually to uh, <laughs> promote this. And it's like, do you not know you're actually setting up the Antichrist kingdom, not Jesus Christ kingdom? But exactly. you know, uh, you know, like That's Dave Hunt, you, like Dave Hunt used to say, if you're waiting for Christ to meet you on the ground, you're waiting for the Antichrist. You know, yeah. Jesus Christ is going to meet you in the air. You know, right. <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, so. If you got to build his kingdom, that's not Jesus Christ. Bad news for you. All right, um, Sam. Education, religion, family, business, government, military, arts, entertainment, and media. If we can get these things, then Jesus could come back. Now, I guess this message came from what I read uh, was by divine revelation from God himself. Now, the question I want to ask you, Sam, is, is God a liar? Because in Daniel, he says, he will set up his own kingdom. The rock that was cut out of the mountain without hands, without human hands. So what say you? Is God a liar? He is not a liar. God has made it very clear in the Bible that he's going to be the one to set up his kingdom. He doesn't need us to do it. And like you and Kim said, if we're supposed to set up the kingdom, we're setting it up for the Antichrist. It's not a good thing. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. You know, Louis, um, <laughs> The Antichrist is going to do a lot of things when he gets here. Matter of fact, I personally think he's alive right now. Maybe he doesn't know he's the Antichrist yet. But when Satan comes to him with that offer that he tried to offer Jesus in the wilderness, you know, just bow down before me and I'll give you the kingdoms. He's going to say yes. He's going to jump mm -hmm. at it and he's going to take it. And he's going to be damned from that point on. There's no mm -hmm. hope for him. Right. And Satan's going to use him like a puppet. Now, brother, <laughs> you got some uh, scriptures there that you brought up to me. I want you to go ahead and read one of those because um, we we have to we have to understand that human beings cannot cannot help God. We just can't. We can't even help ourselves, can we? Amen. <laughs> Correct. Um, <clears throat> the use and, and I don't see the relationship between the the verses and what they believe because I, I think this is so ridiculous. And, and to anyone out there, when someone starts out by saying, 
I have a word from God or a, or a vision. It is not from God. And anything else after that is not from God. So if you're curious, fine. If you're not, I suggest you, you never listen to anything. That, uh, that's how they start. Now, they go back to mm -hmm. Isaiah uh, chapter 2, uh, verse 2, and says, And it shall come to pass in the last days, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established in the top of the mountain and shall be exhausted above all the hills and all the nations shall, shall flow from it. I have no idea how they took this verse and, 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 and say that they are supposed to be the ones that take over the mountains. Okay, We, we can't take over anything. And, and like Tim says, uh, and, and, and you said, Chris, God is the one that's going to establish his kingdom. Okay. Anything else that established any other kingdom, uh, like <clears throat> you have said, is and the Antichrist uh, kingdom. So there is no other kingdom except Jesus' kingdom, and He will establish it. Don't listen to anything that any of these people say. Uh, you know, prophets, uh, people that hear God's voice. When you're hearing voices, um, you. You need a psychologist, and that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, because we got to expose them. Well, we already did, didn't we? The psychology mm. stuff. Okay. Yeah, we did. Yeah. yeah. We did <laughs> uh, okay, all right. So, yeah, amen to that. But, you know, I'm going to read a verse here that they use uh, in, in Revelation chapter 17, uh, verses 9 to 11, and we'll talk about it. It says here, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. And there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth into perdition. Now, here's the thing. They don't say the rest of that. They stop it at the seven mountains. That's where they stop it. They don't talk about the beast. They don't talk about what kingdom this is describing. To them, they just take the, the, the mountains and say, hey, that's for us to conquer. So, Addy... Um, are, aren't they working for the Antichrist at this point? Because this is describing the Antichrist kingdom during the tribulation. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if they, they knew how to do a contextual study of God's word, they would understand that. But then that would take away all of the uh, the accolades that they praise, they, they put upon themselves. Now, um, you said, Kim, you said something, and Chris, you said something that I'm going to go back and cover. Kim, yes, you were right. right. There was fringe groups. The Montanists from the second century were considered, you know, and all of this, you know what the common thread is, is Gnosticism. Gnosticism. Uh, Paul, I mean, a lot of the, the, the books of scripture of the New Testament are speaking against and exposing Gnosticism. So, yeah, there were the Montanists, there were the Irvingites in the 1830s, and then uh, in the early 1900s, there was an apostolic church that took over and it kind of evolved into what we see today um the visions you were taught the vision you were talking about chris i have this in my notes um lauren cunningham with ywam and bill bright mm -hmm. with campus crusade for christ and francis schaefer received a message from god all individually by the way in the same time at the same time all in individually they were not together when they received this message from God, ordering them, ordering them to invade. Now, ask yourself if this is the kind of language that the God of, that we know would use. It sounds more like uh, Jesus calling. Ordering them to invade the seven spheres of society. But it was not until two, the, the year 2000 or 2001 during the meeting between Lauren Cunningham and Lance Wallnau, that the movement really, really accelerated and came to prominence after the publishing of Lance Wallnau and Bill Johnson's book, Invading Babylon, the Seven Mountain Mandate in 2013. Of course, a lot of us can remember, uh, what was that? Oh, the Latter Rain Movement. You remember their Latter Rain mm, yep. Movement, like the 1940s and 50s or yep. so? Okay. So what that did is that, that was kind of... <clears throat> Welched even by the charismatics, they they had conferences that said, "Oh no no no, we don't want this in our in our churches." So it went underground. Then it resurfaced at the set as the Seven Mountain uh, Mandate. And it, I, and I mean, I could give you tons more information, but I think that pretty much supports what you and Kim just said. 
Uh, you summed it up good. To. Yeah, you summed it up good because they, you know, it's like the latter rain Joshua generation yes. and all this other manifest nonsense. Manifest son of God. Manifest, manifest sons of God. God. Remember yeah. that? Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, the fivefold ministry. Joel, Joel, Joel's <laughs> army. Remember Joel's, Joel's army? army. That, all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. So you know, Kim. Um, I think this goes back even further. Okay, I think that Satan tried this once before in Genesis 11, mm-hmm. the Tower of Babel. He uh, tried to get the entire world at that time against God. I mean, he'd been trying to build this one world government from Jump Street, right? Exactly. Um, and that really actually, that really hones in onto the very first or one of the, again, what Addie said before, there's no really order. But the church and religion, and I just want to read these really quick because, again, it's a false light. So when I say church slash religion, it, that's all it is. So the Tower of Babel is going to be different. I keep saying that. People agree. Just don't d- agree with me, whatever. If he's not going to come on the wings of tyranny. I'm talking about the Antichrist. It's going to be a new uh, religion. And these are some of the things that they say. Of course, they butcher Matthew 16, 18, where it says, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not overcome it. But these are just some. I'm not going to read all of them. But these are the ones that really stood out to me. And so to answer your question, it says here, number one, we can pray for a spirit of unity in the church. And they use John chapter 17 for that. We can pray for all to follow the way of love. We can pray. This right here was very disturbing. So, again, this is coming together all as one. Um we can pray for the Holy Spirit's anointing on all churches, catch it, no matter their denomination. Mm. Wow. And then it says, um, we can take hold of the Great Commission once again. I didn't know we lost it. And uh, making disciples. So to answer your question, I feel that's what me personally, that's why I feel this new super spiritual new religion that's going to come on the scene is going to mirror the Tower of uh, Babel very well because people are going to be deceived as they were back then. And I say Confusion. amen. I say yeah. amen to that. I, I personally believe it's going to be a mystery Babylon, though, not the literal one that that's Iraq and you know Persia and all that area. Mm-hmm. But this is going to be, uh, Paul says, a mystery. So something they haven't seen at that time, but it's going to be like a spiritual mm-hmm. Babylon, as wicked as Babylon was. Mm-hmm. This is how this spiritual entity, this new religion is going to be. All right, mm-hmm. so Sam. Um, (laughs) we're talking about, you know, individuals here that have heard from God. They, I mean, audible, they, you know, they, they've had visions. Like Addie said, this is serious. Like if we, like us, we're the heretics because we're questioning God now, you know, how dare we, I mean, if they get a word from God, then you know what that means? They have just added to scripture, right? Because Mm -hmm. now that revelation has become divine revelation, just like the scriptures, right, Sam? Exactly. They try to make it impossible for people to question them because then they say you're questioning God or I've heard people say that, you know, if people have questioned them, they're like, you're committing the unforgivable sin. So they really try to control people with fear because they don't want them to question them. They want the power to be like, God said this and you can't test it against the Bible because... Who are you to question God, basically? Right, right. You know, yeah, who are we, right? Because if we do, mm-hmm. you know, we're questioning scripture. If I said, yeah. if I said right now, the Lord just spoke to me, and they do this a lot on TV. I know Benny Hinn and them, those guys, oh, the Lord just said to me right now, right now, you know, uh, donate $1,200. What, how much, honey? How, how, how much we need? Oh, 2000 No, what? <laughs> Three three thousand. The Lord just told me, <laughs> you, know, you know, and it's like people are so terrified. You know, it's kind of like mm-hmm. uh, the Catholic Church when they hold people in fear. If mm-hmm. you go against the Catholic yeah. Church, you are damned. You're gonna go right past purgatory and straight to hell. It's like you're mm-hmm. excommunicado. That's it, man. <laughs> you know, no chance for you. <laughs> and it's like it's like all right, John Wick, I'm excommunicado. I got you. <laughs> but um, you know, <laughs> uh, Brother Lewis and uh. <laughs> And Daniel, 
Okay, and I love this uh, when he's talking about the uh, the the statues, the dreams of the stat, the statue of kingdoms, right? And and those statues. Well, I'll do a quick outline of those kingdoms right now. One, the first one, the head of gold, was the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar, right? That's where Daniel, when they took the children of Israel and captured them because of their disobedience to God, God allowed that to happen. But of course, God had another motive as well. He needed Daniel in there for other things to happen, right? Pro prophetic wise. Then you had the Medo-Persian Empire, ruled by Darius and Cyrus, the chest of arms and silver. The Grecian Empire, everybody knows this guy, Alexander the Great, uh, the stomach and thighs of brass. The Roman Empire, we know them too, the Caesars, the legs of iron. And then you have the Roman political religious mixed empire, which is going to be with the Antichrist and the false prophet, iron mixed with clay. Now, it's funny because at the end of this vision, uh, it says that there's a, a, a stone cut out of a mountain, right? And I think I mentioned this before, without human hands. This stone, and I want you guys to notice this, it doesn't hit the statue on the head. It doesn't hit the statue on the, the chest. It hits at the feet. Now, listen, we know by history that we're in the last days. Babylonian Empire, already gone. Medo-Persia, already gone. The Grecian, already gone. The Roman Empire, it's wounded, it's still here, but it's not where it was. What's left? We're, we're alive now, and the only kingdom that's left is the feet. So we know that the, right after that, Jesus Christ has to come, because there's nothing else after the feet except for his kingdom. Right, Louis? Uh, it's a very specific, uh, uh, and it's funny how, you know, you know, you just mentioned the rock which, you know, from the Old Testament, it's always talked about Jesus Christ, uh, the, the, the cornerstone. Uh, that's why when he said, you know, upon this rock, I will build my church. It Amen. wasn't talking about Peter, who means uh, pebble. It's talking about himself, and he will build his church. Uh, all these people that come up with all, all these things, and, and, you know, you mentioned money, how they ask for money. But, you know, uh, Abby mentioned the fact that they wrote a book, and books bring in money. And this is all about money. Mm -hmm. Now, they don't know that while they're doing this for money, they're actually setting up the Antichrist uh, kingdom here on Earth. Uh, but it's all greed. It's all money. They came back it up. And I, none of us ever question God, but we do question men. That's right. You know, brother, amen, amen to that, man. You know, amen. Uh, man's word is not perfect. God's word is right. Like we, what, we're all Bereans right here. What we're doing is 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 satisfying to God right now. This is what He wants His children to do. You know, the Bereans were commended by Paul for doing what they did. They quest, they didn't say, "Oh man, this is the famous Paul, man. He must be telling the truth." No, they're like, "All right, Paul, we heard about you, buddy, but." going to check some things out here, <laughs> you know, and they checked out the Old Testament scriptures, mm -hmm. right? And I'm assuming like Isaiah 53, like, whoa, Isaiah 53 mm -hmm. just described the death, burial, and resurrection of, of Christ, you know, mm -hmm. uh, even, though the, even though the mid-Acts say that started in the New Testament, but whatever, we won't go there right now. It's a different <laughs> subject. Um, but, you know, um, Addie, we're going to go, we're going to say one last word around because time is running out. But Addy, what would you say, okay, and this is only part one, guys. We've got some more coming. What would you say to the people that are caught up in this movement right now? They're, they're, they're like knee deep in. They've been there for years. Now they're hearing this for the first time and they're kind of scared to, to make a move. What do you got to say to them? Well, I would just say that uh, when you are following people, whether it's within Christendom or, or not, when you're following anyone, and you question them and they rebuke you for questioning them, there's a problem. Uh, when you are following people, men and women, of course, we didn't give our list of all of the people that involve, I guess we could do that later. Uh, men and women, when uh, you look and if you are uh, acquainted with scripture at all, if you're a professing Christian and if you read anything about scripture, you know a lot of what they're telling you is unbiblical. It's contrary to scripture, even to the degree of being doctrines of demons. So I would tell people, if you, you know, you may not be aware that this is not of God. This is what this program is about. This is to help you to understand that. Um, the leadership in the New Apostolic, the Seven Mountain Mandate, they know what they're doing. They do. I believe they full, they're fully aware. The people that follow them are not. So I would just suggest that you go to God's word, 
If somebody tells you not to question them, that's when you question them. Amen. That that Amen. should be a red flag. Amen. It has been for all of us on this panel today. When somebody tells me to not question something, that's when I'm going to question them Amen. and investigate. So I would suggest <clears> if you're <throat> watching this and, and you are not, you're caught up in this. You don't really, you didn't really understand up until this point that it was not biblical, that it was contrary to scripture. I would say, go to God's word. Find yourself some some uh, some people that you know that are outside of the seven mountains and talk to them. You know that they're biblically grounded, biblically sound. Talk to them and ask them questions. And there are some great, you know, like this program and other ministries that could help you as well. But uh, uh, I would just say complete what you just said, Chris, be a Berean. If, if, if the Bereans could, could question Paul of all people, and if, this is what I always tell people, notice that when Paul, when they questioned Paul and went back and, and checked the scriptures, Paul did not get upset with them. He commended them. He, he, he was thankful. He praised them. You know, he said, good job. That's Amen. what you're supposed to do. So that would be my, my uh, suggestion. Excellent. Excellent advice. Kim, you know, uh, what Addie was saying about, you know, these individuals saying, you know, I rebuke you if you come against them. Well, you've had some experience with that with a, a favorite person of ours, uh, Mr. Greg Locke. You know, he's uh, kind of like blocked you or rebuked you or whatever, right? Uh, of course he has. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you get that. You will get the um, the hatred the the judgmental comments the scriptures thrown out of context but touch not thou thou wast anointed if whatever they say um so with that being said yes it's it's a scary place to be and hopefully i can say this i don't want to ruin anyone else's time if you ask this question but part of the reason i think that we are in the position right now because people who get up and preach and i use that word very, very loosely. They don't talk, they don't say mountain number one, two, seven, right? And I might upset some feathers here today. The MAGA movement mm -hmm. really drove this. Yep. So when you have a Greg Locke who Amen. spits out his uh, nastiness, this is, this is what's becoming. And um, so I, had uh, Dr. J.B. Hickson on my podcast a couple of weeks ago. I don't remember uh, a few weeks ago, but I'm in the process of reading his spirit of the Antichrist. So to piggyback off of what Addie said, this is part of the Luciferian agenda. Now, there's some things in the book where I don't agree with um, that's way out there, but I will. I, I told him I'd read the book and, and really see. So 100 percent, the devil has been since Genesis three. This has been his plan um from that day forward so when you have people like a greg lock um and many others that i have called out here as of late because we're just living chris as you said before in these last days like i i believe now with the queen dying um it, i was gonna call him saint charles um with charles now with millions at his disposal Again, I don't believe, I mean, the, the devil has a, an antichrist in every generation. That's yeah. right. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I find that very prophetic. And I know this has nothing to do with it, kind of, sort of, but it really does. Because this is going to be the birthing. I think we're birthing it. Trump birthed this movement in a, in a way that people just forgot what it's like to be a born again believer. And instead they turn. Now, I'm not saying vote, do whatever you want to do. Be a patriot. But there's a great line between that, but being a born again believer and someone who's so radically right, you forget really that God is first and center. And I, I believe that's why this is happening and people are calling people out because we are definitely seeing a division. Sorry to go around the long way on that, but it's just sick. And I think that has a lot to do with it. And I say yeah, amen to that. Can I, yelled out by Greg Locke, though. He's such a not Can I say one more thing to support sure. what Tim just said about the MAGA? Sure, and a it. lot of people, and, 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 you know, and I believe, look, vote, pay your taxes, you be a good citizen, because that's what scripture tells us to do. Yeah. But, but the Seven Mountain Mandate is very socio-political. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it has created a political Christian activism group. Listen mm -hmm. to what Charlie Kirk, who is pure New Apostolic yeah. Reformation, said. Oh, 
This is a direct quote in 2020 at one of his conservative political action conferences. This is what he said. Finally, we have a president that understands the seven mountains mm. of cultural yeah. influence. Yeah. He said that. Jack Hibbs. At, Remember, don't right. forget Jack, Jack Hibbs. Jack Hibbs. Hibbs. Oh, we could name yeah. a ton of them. You know, we could. Uh, Mike Lindell. I mean, there's a bunch of them. I wanted to give that little bit of information to support what Kim just said. Yeah. Awesome. And and piggybacking off of what Addie and Kim said, Sam, um, the MAGA, you know, movement. Like I tell people, conservative does not equal Christianity. Amen. Just, yeah. just, just like just like liberal does not equal lost. OK, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of people, they mix uh, their political views and they say, oh, well, you know, he's a conservative. He's a Christian. No, no, no. That's not being a Berean, man. You have a lot of conservative Catholics. A lot of conservative mm-hmm. Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Probably a lot of conservative Satanists, you know, witches or whatever. Um, yeah. Listen, Sam, is it smart to attach a political view with Christianity? No, no, it's not. It's it's not because politics and Christianity are two different things. Um, I mean when I was registering to like, you know, be in what party, I went with the conservative party because I'm like, that just aligns more with my Christian beliefs. Um, But I mean, yeah, there could be very fleshy Christians, carnal Christians that are liberals. And there can be very MAGA Republican people on the right that are Mormons or Jehovah's Witnesses or anything else. So the two don't go together. Just because someone's a Republican doesn't mean that they're a Christian. Amen. I mean, I remember, uh, you know, Donald Trump's, uh, you know, p- uh, uh, spiritual advisor, Paula White. You oh, know, dear. And, uh, we, 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 we could have a whole nother segment just on her alone. You know, she has mm-hmm. to work. What'd she say? She has to work her hips and her lips, you know, because that's yes. what God has given her. I, I couldn't believe she said that, you know, in front of everybody. But she said that. And then she promoted watching porn with her third husband. Uh, you remember yes. that, Kim? Yeah. Sure and uh, yeah, this is the kind of people that surround, you know, presidential leaders. Like, and I know I'm going to get a lot of mm-hmm. slack for this too, but Billy Graham. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you just said a word. You you need a demon expelled. <laughs> Got a name. Got a name. Okay. But Billy How dare Graham. you come against that anointed? Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what's funny? Um, okay. So Billy Graham was welcomed by every. Uh, state, every person, every you know, president, whatever. He, he was welcomed everywhere. You know, mm-hmm. he was honored mm-hmm. by the world when he died. You know, mm-hmm. Carol Patriciana died. I didn't hear the world say nothing about her. Uh, Dave, Dave Hunt died. Didn't hear nothing about that. You know, but you know, Paul Jan Crouch. Oh, they, thank God, I can't believe it. You know, so um, the world loves its own. The Bible says, uh, right, "Brother Lord, let's get the gospel out to people." Now, um, it's not as complicated as the mid acts folks uh, like to think, right? And uh, it's not, you know, take over the world for Jesus and, and repent from your sins. What is the simple gospel that saves souls, my brother? Um, accept Jesus Christ uh, and, and you and your household will be saved. It, it, it's that simple. You don't have to go into a lot of details. It, it, it's your heart. When you open up your heart to Jesus uh, and, and he knows if you are uh, opening up your heart for real or not. So. Um, he will come. He, he, he will indwell within you. I mean, your whole, this Holy Spirit will lead you to the truth. Um, and that's the problem that we have today, that um, we fo- people follow men. They don't follow the Word of God. And if you read the Word of God, it will speak to you. That's why it's called the Word of God. God is speaking to you. It's not Paul writing something. It's God telling Paul, write this because I want my children to know the truth. Um, and as far as political, uh, and Chris and I talk about this, you know, we depend on the one sitting on the throne, not the one in the Oval Office. Amen. So we go to Jesus. We go to Jesus for everything. Uh, and, and, and the word will speak. The, the word will let you see the lie that's out there. Um, so simple. Accept Jesus. Uh, and he will come into your life. He will change your life. You will never be the same. And, you know, brother, you know, uh, to piggyback out for what you just said about that, um, Satan's a very clever enemy. Right. So he'll he'll have, you know, the overtly evil, 
you have the liberals that are overtly just like, you know, abortion, homosexual marriage, and they're pushing that. And you can see it with your eyes and you're like, you get so angry. But then he has the, you know, the the conservatives that are also pushing evil agendas. Yes. Right. But it's under the radar. So what's going to mm-hmm. happen? You know, he's saying he's getting you so mad over here that you're going to mm-hmm. you're not going to see the the false white horse coming in over here. I Amen. believe the Antichrist Amen. is actually going to be a conservative. Yeah, I mean, think about mm-hmm. it. He's mm-hmm. going to be the one to come in with law and order. Don't mm-hmm. worry, guys. I'll put things right. You know, mm-hmm. this evil yeah. will not go on anymore. So, but people are looking at the liberals and saying the Antichrist is going to be a liberal. No, mm-hmm. no, that's like a magician yeah. saying, look over here when the real trick is coming right. over here. You got to be careful, mm-hmm. guys. You got to be careful. So, listen, mm-hmm. um, before we go, uh, uh, I want you guys to go to uh, Kim's YouTube channel, subscribe over there. She's back on YouTube, guys. That's why I haven't been uploading her videos. But they're in the, the what do you call it, the playlist on my channel if you want to, you know, go. But subscribe. We need the LHB family to go over there and subscribe, okay? And uh, also on a Rumble Rumble channel. And Thank subscribe to <laughs> and subscribe that's to the us backup because well. I already YouTube would not play one of my videos already. So. Oh man, I tell you, and I have to edit two things. Yeah, they it, it's it's a it's a hassle with them, but I'm glad to be back. Wow. It, it's it's yeah, it's a it's a shame, but you know, it's mm-hmm. only temporary. You know, during the millennium, there won't be any uh, YouTube or they CNN won't. or anything. Well, hopefully, maybe today there won't be any more because we'll be amen, amen. amen. <laughs> And yes. then the right hand can come out and do its magic trick that we've been warning people about for years. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Exactly. But, you, but you know what? They, they, they say we're loony for saying things like that because, mm-hmm. you know, obviously conservatives are not evil. But, I'm, you know, look, when I tell people we've had <laughs> well, conservatives in power differ. before. There are some wild crazy. <laughs> we've had conservatives in power before and homosexual marriage mm-hmm. is still here. Right. Abortion is that still is, here. Nothing uh, was different. Mm-hmm. Nothing was different. Yeah. And people, yeah. I don't know yeah. why they don't see this. Yeah. But a, a man is not going to save you. Right. A God yeah. man is going yeah. to save you. <laughs> you know, yeah. so he's right. gonna bring in that kingdom. All right, guys, listen, we love you guys. We thank you for joining us. This is part one. Hopefully, we'll get everybody back for part two when we do it. All right, because there's a lot more to cover. This time just flew from us. And again, uh, next time, hopefully, we'll have Lesty on uh, after we figure out the technical uh, challenges yeah. she was going through. You know. And um, we thank you. So um, until next time, my friends, look up. Our redemption draws near. Maranatha and God bless. Maranatha.